Hello again, my name is Jason, and today we're going to be talking about the Elfstones of Shannara. Uh, the Elfstones is one of my favorite books, and uh, out of all of the Shannara series, it is my favorite out of all of them. Now, usually, uh, what I do when I review books and things is I <clears throat> start with the first book in the series. Uh, I'm starting with Elfstones because I like it the best, for one, and the second reason is because of the convoluted uh, way that the Elf, or that the Shinar timeline has developed over the years. So Terry Brooks, uh, he wrote the Elfstones of Shinara as the second book in the the Shinara series. Um, he wrote the Sword of Shinara first, and then the Elfstones, and then he wrote the Wish Song of Shinara, and then he went back and wrote the first King of Shinara, and then he went forward and wrote another series. Um, and then <clears throat> I don't remember which direction he went after that, if he kept going after, but he's also actually circled back around and told uh, uh, the kind of the build-up and what happened t to the four lands uh, that made them the way they were for when the Shannara series came out. Um, so anyway... Um, in the the Elfstones of Shannara, the setup is is this: the four lands are uh, peopled by uh, humans, or that's what people think, and they they've divided themselves into different groups because of the evolution over time that has happened. There's the humans, the the dwarves, the trolls, uh, the gnomes, and the elves, um, and <clears throat> what has happened is everybody thinks that um, all of the races that are there are offshoots of the human race, um, but they're not. The dwarves, the trolls, uh, and the gnomes, those are offshoots of the human race. Um, but the elves, the elves have been around forever. They've been around since way before humanity. They've been around way before the cataclysm that shaped the lands the way that they are. Um, <clears throat> but they... And the elves know this. It's just that the other races just think that they're part of the human race. Anyway, um, <clears throat> back in the, the dawn of time before uh, humanity arose and, and the cataclysm and all this stuff, uh, there was the fairy. Uh, the, the races of the fairy, the various... <clears throat> um, mythological races, if you will. And they fought a war uh, against the demons, which was just another race of the fairy, but um, they were divided into two camps, basically. Those who were good and wanted to take care of the earth, and those who were bad and wanted to exploit things. Um, and such <clears throat> was the nature of the good, um, the group of good fairy, that they couldn't bring themselves to destroy completely those who were evil. And so what they did was they they basically uh, won the war and then took all the evil uh, races and locked them in limbo. And uh, they have this tree called the Elkris. It's got um, blood red leaves that are kind of heart shaped uh, and it's it's in the main city of the elven nation, and it's taken care of by people who are called the Chosen. Now, the Chosen basically just, you know, tend to the garden that the tree is in, um, because as far as they know, the tree is going to live forever. It's been around forever, it's going to live forever. <clears throat> and they don't even, at this point in their timeline, even believe that there was this war, and that this tree, they just think it's a symbol of, of you know, old times and so you know the elven people and all this stuff and um silver bark it has silver bark the tree tree does not that that's important at this point i just recalled the the that detail anyway um <clears throat> at the point in time where we come in um the like i said people don't really believe this story anymore the elves and the demons fought and that the uh, the good races of the fairy locked them away in this limbo and this tree is maintaining this limbo and keeping 
the the evil races uh, locked out of the four lands. Um, and the chosen are there, uh, and they're tending to the tree. And that's when they notice that the tree, some of the leaves are starting to wilt. And this is something that's never happened, never been recorded in all of the history that the elves even still record, that the tree was even sick or lost a leaf or anything like that. The tree has always been there. It's always flourished. It's always been a, a symbol of basically uh, immortality in, in a sense. <clears throat> and the tree is actually a sentient being and it reaches out to its chosen and tells them that it's dying and that the demons are going to come back. Um, <clears throat> and this is when we, uh, we get introduced more to um, the elves and, and what's going on there because they start to panic. Nobody has seen demons for years. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Alanon, the druid, um, he shows up. Uh, if you've never read any of the Shannara books, you can think of Alanon as uh, a mag he's a, a magician, a, a wizard, if you will. He has the ability to use magic, whereas um, most people, uh, most normal people, don't have access to that resource. <clears throat> and um, the chosen are basically all killed. And, you, uh, and that's when the elves really realize what's going on. Uh, because the, the chosen are there not just to, to nurture the tree, but in, in times of crisis like this, where the tree is dying, there is a way to renew the tree, to renew, it's called the forbidding, that keeps the demons locked away. And <clears throat> so it's important that, that uh, only the cho one of the chosen who's currently serving the tree, can carry the seed um, <clears throat> that will renew the tree. And uh, so all the Chosen are slaughtered um, by some demons that have escaped. And Alanon finds out um, how the tree can be uh, renewed, and he goes to find the one last Chosen. There is one Chosen left. What had happened was she had decided to exile herself. She felt um, that she was, uh, that it was a mistake to be chosen, and so she took herself into, into exile. And um, it was important that uh, out of all the chosen, the tree usually chose men. And she was, she was chosen. Am her name is Amberly, and uh, she was the first female chosen in hundreds of years. So it was a big deal. And then on top of that, she was the king's granddaughter. And on top of that, she then goes into exile. And so the elven people are, you know, quite happy with her. Uh, so Alanon goes to find her. And uh, in going to find her, he uh, is attacked by demons, finds out what he needs to know about how to uh, renew the tree and keep the four lands safe from the demons. Um, the thing is, is that he knows that way before the, the four lands can be, <clears throat> um, re or before the tree can be renewed, the demons are going to break free. And so he recruits Will Armsford. Now, if you've read the Sword of Shannara, uh, Will is the grandson of Shay Armsford, who was one of the heroes from the Sword of Shannara. Um, if you haven't read it, then, you know, go back and read the Sword of Shannara. It is a good book. My preference, I love the Elfstones of Shannara. It's, um, out of all of the, the books that, that Terry Brooks has, has written, um, I have read, uh, a lot. I haven't read all of them. I haven't read, uh, the Word and the Void series, which ties into the, the Shannara series. Um, some of the new ones I haven't read, uh. But, and I've also read um, Magic Kingdom, For Sale, Sold. I've read that series. Uh, Elfstones of Shannara is by far my favorite. So anyway, um, in the uh, Sword of Shannara, uh, Shea Armsford had access to three blue stones. They were, they were elf stones for seeking. Uh, they could find, they could protect him against magic or against, well, they could, 
Yeah, they were they were a protection for him, but they also allowed him to find things that were lost. Uh, he gave them to his grandson Will, who had them, and Alanon recruited Will to be Amberly's guardian to go find what was called Safehold and the Bloodfire. Now the Bloodfire um, is basically the heart of magic in the Earth, something of that nature, and uh, it would be uh, uh, used to fertilize the seed of the new Elkris, Elkris tree, uh, which would then uh, renew the forbidding, keep the demons locked out, and all that stuff. Alanon decided Will would go with Amberly and find the Bloodfire. That would be his job and his quest to guard her. Um, and he, on the mean, uh, he in the meantime, would then uh, help the elven people in their fight against the demons. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, the, there are actually three main demons that are awesome. They are well written. They are just well done. Um, there are the three main demons, uh, the Dagdamore, uh, he is the main demon. He has killed all other weaker demons that have challenged him, and he is the leader of the demons. Um, and uh, then there's, there's the Changeling, who is, can assume any form of any living animal, any living being, really. And uh, uh, he's basically the spy for the demons and he does uh he's there's a a, a very dark era aura <clears throat> of menace around him because you can you can see that he he is having an effect on 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 the progression of the story and what's going on but you don't know who he is you don't know which person could be the the changeling he's hidden and the third one is my favorite he's the reaper uh, the Reaper is death on two legs. He is, uh, he's thin. He's not a, a giant monster, He's but he's like seven feet tall and nigh indestructible. And <clears throat> the Dagdamore and the Reaper, and the Changeling, while they are fighting with the elves, the Reaper is tracking Will and Amberly and trying to stop them from completing their quest, which will basically end the demon threat. Um, along the way, we meet Eritrea, or Eritrea, however you would, would like to say it. Uh, she becomes important later on. Uh, <clears throat> she is one of the, basically the gypsies uh, that roam around the, the, the four lands. And she becomes, as I said, she becomes important in the story later. Um, <clears throat> so... Like I said, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, the writing was tight and well done. The characters are um, very much... Uh, they're well fleshed out. They're... they're the. I, I keep going back to this is just... This book just really was a good book. Um, <clears throat> highly worth the, the read. Um, <clears throat> the... You... I do like how it jumps back and forth. Uh, for a while, it stays with Alanon and, and talks about the defense of the elven homeland. <clears throat> it talks about uh, how the elves um, basically put out the word that they're about to be invaded by demons, and it doesn't. Uh, and the uh, the four lands, the other <clears throat> the other lands, they respond back uh, in various ways. Uh, Mostly, they're like, this is an elven problem, over to you guys. You, you take care of it. Uh, the trolls, though, the trolls who have been seen as bad guys in, in the Four Lands, they show up with a, a large army and, and are really helpful in, in uh, defending the, the elven homeland, which goes a long way to repairing that, that, that gulf between the races at this point. Um, there's some humans uh, that come from, uh, it's one of the, the Borderlands cities, um, and I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but he's, uh, he's one of the Legion, um, the Old Guard, if I remember right. Uh, Stee Jans is his, is his name. He's the commander of the Old Guard, and he is, uh, 
he's an amazing fighter and I, I do like the the background that Terry Brooks gave him um, and then uh, other than that Al-Anon is basically who they rely on for help um, <clears throat> Now, I do want to touch a little bit on uh, the, I believe it was HBO show that they did on the Elfstones of Shannara. Um, and so I like this book. This is, like I said, this is one of my favorites. Um, and I, uh, I, I actually got a, uh, a copy of the Elfstones of Shannara on audiobook so I could listen to it on my drive to work and stuff. And boy, it was awful. <laughs> I gotta say, it was so bad. Um, the the narrator of the book kept pronouncing the word sh uh, Shannara. And I'm going like, every time he said that word, I in my mind, I'm sitting there going, there is no E. Why are you pronouncing the, the second A as an E? It's not Shannara. It's Sha-na-ra. Easy. Anyway, um, then they did the... the the Elfstones of Shannara became uh, an HBO show. And I was kind of excited when I first heard this. I was like, this is this is awesome. The Elfstones is the best one they could start with. That It's just an amazing story. Uh, and I watched one episode and couldn't get past it. It was that bad. They did that horrible a job of interpreting it. Uh, for some reason, there was a, a, a love story between... Um, Al-Anon and some, uh, like, the Amberley's elvish aunt, I think it was. It's like, uh, you disappeared never... I'm, I'm, like, going, he's... Wh why? There wasn't even a hint of anything of that nature in the book. I mean, maybe if if there had been, like, if he'd run into somebody... Uh, if Al-Anon had, in the book, run into an elf and been like, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry about the way I did you, but, hey, I'm a druid. I My... My purview is the entire four lands. I'm its protector. I just couldn't get involved with you at that time. That would have made sense to bring this this uh, thing in, but she gets immediately killed by demons. There was no point. None at all. Um, Eritrea, uh, her character, her character was actually good. Wills was mm, okay. Um, but the way that they did the whole, in order for you to be chosen, to be uh, um, uh, to be one of the chosen, it was some uh, gauntlet death race. You had to you had to run from the starting line to the the um, the garden where the Elkris was was living. You had to have your hands tied behind your back, and you were blindfolded, and you're running through the trees against these other people. Why? What was the point of that? In the book, it's perfectly reasonable the way that the, the Chosen became the Chosen. All of the elves who came of age that year knelt in front of the tree. If you were to be a Chosen, the tree touched you. The tree chose you. That's why they were the Chosen. Not the, we just ran through a gauntlet and we chose ourselves. No. And so there's this whole thing about Amberly succeeding to become a chosen because she had to compete against all these guys and stuff. And I'm like, dude, just make her the way she was in the book. She was, she, I mean, she wasn't like, you know, pull out a sword and, and kick your butt and, and, and she wasn't some butch warrior chick. No, she, but she wasn't like one, she wasn't like a damsel in distress. She wasn't. She took charge of the situations when she needed to. She she didn't rely on just on Will to be her protector. She worked with him. Um, she was a strong female character in her own right. She wasn't. I mean, this does show her, you know, on the on the cover here, with Will in front using the elf stones. She realized she couldn't take on a demon. That that's not her. That's not her point. That's. That's not her strength. Her her um, job at this point was to guard the seed, to keep it away from the demons. And so Will is in front using the magical weapon, the only weapon they had that could defeat a demon. 
So yeah, she's taking a backseat in this scene. She was smart enough to realize, what am I going to do against a demon? Scratch it with my, my fingernails that are going to immediately break and it's going to tear me to shreds? No, she wasn't that stupid. So while they did this this bizarre gauntlet run through the trees crap, I'm sitting there going, oh, you had an awesome book to work with. A book that's well written, well thought out, tightly tightly written, just um, the, the characterizations are good, and you're pulling this crap? What? Where was Terry Brooks during this? I, if he, it, I mean, he's still alive, but if he had died, he would have been spinning in his grave. I'm like, sitting there going, yeah, it was bizarre to me. So, like I said, I made it through one episode, and like this was this is my favorite of the uh, the Shannara books, and I could not, could not stand to watch another episode. Watched one episode, and yep, I was, I'm uh, I'm I'm done. I'm out of here, and I haven't gone back since. I've thought about it, but I keep remembering that first episode, and it just ugh, can't do it. Anyway. Uh, Elfstones of Shannara, I do recommend this, the series, uh, uh, The Sword of Shannara, I, I do recommend the, the, that first series. I really liked the, um, uh, the follow-up series, The Scions of Shannara, and, and the first King of Shannara. Um, I haven't been very impressed with, uh, the pre, I think it's called the prehistory of, of Shannara, but I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look. Uh, it has the the Gypsy Morph, and um, I'm trying to remember some of the other books in that that particular series. But it, it basically bridges the gap between the Word and the Void series and the Shannara series. I'm not really a big fan of that one. Didn't really uh, didn't really like it. Elves of, of Sintra is one of the um, one of the books in that series. Anyway, um, so. If you like this, like and subscribe, click the button to get notified and all that other stuff. And uh, if you have questions or comments, let me know. Bye.